Atsunati Loli Taylor. Tarapalawa, greetings and tēnā koutou katoa. I rise to speak um, to the first reading of the Ban Report Children Bill on behalf of New Zealand First. Um, Mr. Speaker, when the lives and the rights of children are at stake, there must be no silent witnesses. There must be no silent witnesses. It is our duty as politicians, uh, decision makers, policy makers and legislative makers to ensure that the most vulnerable are protected against harm and from those who inflict it. And I commend the Minister for the efforts that you have put through in this bill. Um, unfortunately, it so happens that in our New Zealand society, the term vulnerable is too often um, associated with our children. So the bill has a number of objectives to be commended as it aims to, number one, reinforce the need for shared responsibility and coordinated and collaborative action across the government social services sector to better protect vulnerable children. This collaborative effort will see the police, the justice and ministers of health, education, social development, chief executive officers be held accountable for protecting and improving the lives of vulnerable children. And I think that is a very good thing. Help ensure, which is number two, help ensure children are safe with those that work with them. This intends to address the issue of having pedophiles or people with a history of abusive nature that should never be allowed to come near the vulnerable children. Number three is to minimise the risk of future harm posed by those who have abused children in the past and in doing so, ensuring the safety of children of adults who have previously had a child or a young person permanently removed from their care due to abuse or neglect, or where the adult has been convicted of murder, manslaughter, or infanticide of a child in his or her care, or in her case. Now, there have been many cases in recent months in this situation. The bill seeks to enhance the, the response to children who have already been abused or neglected. Given the recent release uh, devastating records of children being re-abused in the care of serfs, one would expect a thorough process this time. While this government's response to these issues is positive, we cannot forget that it is a delayed response. A delayed response warranted, warranted by recent cases, often resulting in fatality of many New Zealand children. It is unfortunate that the victims in these cases did not have a reasonable response or preventable measures set out at the time to protect them from such devastating harm. New Zealand First was fully aware of this issue. That is why a bill was developed and submitted, which was pulled out of the member's ballot in on December the 6th last year. It should therefore be mentioned that New Zealand First bill in my name, sentencing protection of children from criminal offending amendment bill is the first step towards protecting our vulnerable children in New Zealand. It is rather odd that the Vulnerable Children Bill be swiftly drafted for its first reading in the House when New Zealand First Bill has been waiting its first re uh, reading for many months now. The Sentencing Protection of Children from Criminal Offending Amendment Bill was formulated sometime before today's bill to address the very issues this Vulnerable Children Bill intends to remedy and more. Furthermore, it also aims to properly address the, the way in which New Zealand deals with criminals who on, continue to ignore the rights of our children to safer and secure environment, as well as the deterrence of future criminal activity from occurring. It is with these reasons that I sincerely hope that the government will support our bill when the time comes for its first reading. There are key changes within the Vulnerable Children Bill. It will dramatically alter the judicial system as we see it today. There will be two principal acts. 
One is the Vulnerable Children's Act and the second is the Child Harm Prevention Order Act. It is important that the bill has exhausted all evidence to suggest that the two principles are absolute, justified and provide no room for error. Key changes in this bill include a number of areas. First of all, we, requiring the chief executives to work together to produce and report on the Vulnerable Children's Plan. New Zealand First supports a cross-agency approach. We recognise the need to have a better coordinated and collaborative system put in place to address issues concerned with vulnerable children. We also recognise the importance of accountability placed on these agencies in achieving results for vulnerable children. However, what we need to see is a transparent plan which sets out how these performance targets will be demonstrated and evaluated. I sincerely hope the Minister could give that some considerations. Recently, the Minister announced that the first two children's teams had been established in Rotorua and Whangarei. The design of these two teams is driven by the communities they serve. With two demonstration sites in place, it is important to see the differences these teams will make in assisting vulnerable children in New Zealand. A vulnerable children's board is already established, so what accountability measures are in place for this board? Is there a risk of shifting the blame from one agency to another? These are some of the questions we want to ask from teams to the board. Who at the end will be accountable? Where is the transparent plan to show how this structure will succeed? The bill seeks to have uh, state services put in place policies containing provisions in the identification and reporting of child abuse and neglect. While New Zealand First find this an integral part of the reporting system, we are yet to see what the provisions will be and whether enough focus has been placed on making sure that staff of state services are adequately trained to recognise abuse when it occurs. We do not want to run the risk of false accusations or neglect to see when abuse is occurring. It is important that the Working with Children Code of Practice being developed for professionals working with children is one which will appropriately um, provide guidelines for professionals. It is also vital that training in conjun conjunction with code is provided. Number three is new standard safety checks for employers in government and government funded children's workforce means that over 370,000 employees would be screened and vetted. In addition, there would be an implementation of permanent restriction for people with serious convictions from working closely with children. New Zealand First recognises that the importance of having in place these appropriate safety measures when it comes to protecting children. At an estimated cost of 200,000 every three years, there will be no argument against reduction of ch child abuse in our society. There is no doubt that early and appropriate interventions are crucial in preventing abuse of children. The restrictions suggest immediate dismissal of employees found to have serious conviction from working in roles in the core children's workforce. And we would worry, though, of whether this is extended to those suspected of untoward actions against children. There are many areas in this bill that we would like uh, the Select Committee to consider. And this is probably one of the reasons why New Zealand First um, will support this bill going to the Select Committee only at this time, because we do have a number of concerns that we do hope that the Select Committee and that the opportunity will be provided to the wider public of New Zealand to either submit or to also comment on in order for us to be satisfied that the bill will deliver the outcomes that New Zealand First believe that it deserves. The bill is a really, um, you know, comes with really great intention, Minister. I must um, reiterate that. And I do believe that we are on the right track. We're on, you know, we are, it's a step in the right direction of uh, addressing this very serious and very important issue in our country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Phil Heatley. Okay, can I